Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are back in Japan. As you might be able to tell from the change in background, I'm over here visiting my son once again. So in the evenings, after he's gone to bed, I will be filming some Japanese beer reviews for you, as I very often do when I'm here. So I hope that you guys enjoy the latest instalment of the Japanese mini-series, as I always call it. But uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to return to a brewery that has now featured on the channel quite a few times before. These guys are a very well established brewery these days as well I would say. They've built up a very good reputation for themselves over the last couple of years and they're probably best known for their different kinds of New England hazy whatever you want to call them IPAs although I have noticed they've been trying a couple of different things in recent times which I'll need to check out as well. But the beer we're going to have a look at today is a style that I've had from these guys many times before, one that I know they can do very well but it is a little bit different compared to the previous beers I've tried from this brewery. So needless to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, we are going to head a little bit north of me here in Osaka up toward Nagoya in Aichi Prefecture. But we're going to go a little bit to the east of the city to a place called Nagakuti. And that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Totopia Brewery. So this particular beer, it's called Rimphobia. All of the Totopia beers pretty much have the word phobia in the name. But this one comes in at 7.5% ABV. And this one is a New England hazy imperial double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Now, at 7.5%, it is probably debatable whether this one is actually a double IPA, but this is certainly the strongest IPA I've seen from these guys so far. And pretty much all the beers I've tried from this brewery, if I'm not mistaken, have been at 6.5% EBV. So yeah, this is the strongest IPA I've seen so far from Totopia, and that was the main reason that I decided to pick this one up. But yeah, um, this is another beer that I bought at Craft Beer Base in uh, Umeda here in Osaka who always have an interesting selection of Japanese stuff and so quite a few of the beers you'll see in this particular round of Japanese beer reviews will be from there but I do recommend you go and check the place out they brew some of their own beer which is really nice it's getting better and better every time that I go and they've got a great selection of beers from uh, Japan and from Australia, Canada, the US and various places like that. And also a very interesting store of sour beers too. So I'll put the link to their Facebook page in the video description below. And as I say, do go and check them out if you get the chance. But yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we go. The Rimphobia, a 7.5% New England Hazy IPA from Totopia Brewery in Nagakuti Aichi Prefecture here in Japan. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Totopia Brewery before, and we will undoubtedly do more reviews from these guys in the future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If I reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Japanese playlist along with a number of other things that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, but fairly regularly these days, which I'm quite happy about. But do make sure you check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well, because there are some very interesting things in the, uh, in the channel these days, even if I do say so myself. But yeah, uh, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a wee bit about Totopia Brewery once again. So, Totopia Brewery, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Nagakuti in Aichi Prefecture, which is just to the east of Nagoya, and the brewery was founded back in 2022, but it's the latest version of the team, or the latest um, venture, I should say, not the latest version, the latest venture of the team behind a beer pub Brick Lane in Nagoya, which has been a little bit of a craft beer hub in the city for quite a wee while, somewhere that I really do need to go and check out. But Beer Pub Brick Lane was founded back in 2014 by Junya Morita and his wife Akiko, along with three other friends, and it became a really well-known beer and burger spot in the city. But the following year, they started the Nagoya Craft Beer Map, and they started market research in the US in order to form their own import company 
which began importing American beers over to Japan back in 2017. But they then opened up their own beer shop known as Used Like New Beer, in 2018 and this one also acts as a sandwich shop from what I understand but at this point they decided they wanted to get into actually brewing beer for themselves and so they started planning to form their own brewery so the name Totopia was chosen as a combination of the Japanese word Toto which means like um precious valuable revered something like this and uh, obviously uh, the word Utopia uh, but the location of the brewery had originally been decided as Sato City, but this had to be changed suddenly and they found the current plot that they're based on of 600 square metres in Nagakuti, which like I said earlier is east of the city of Nagoya. But the brewery released their first beers during the second half of 2022 and they do plan to focus on local ingredients where possible in their beers and they've started harvesting their own hops as well from what I understand. But over the last uh, year or two they've been building up their sales and distribution. Some of their beers have of course made it across to Hong Kong and they've exported to a few other places as well from what I understand and they have been um, doing very well. Their beers have been uh, pretty damn good in my experience. But yeah, they've really made their name when it comes to the New England hazies and they seem to be trying a few uh, different things in recent times too. So I need to have a go at some of the other styles. I think I saw one or two sort of sour beers from these guys and sour IPAs and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll be checking those out on the channel fairly soon. Keep your eyes peeled. But as of October 2024, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 130 different kinds of beer according to Untapped, and that number will no doubt continue to increase as time goes on. But um, yeah, pardon me, that's everything I can really tell you about Totopia Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a wee bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on and have a little look at the beer itself. So. Uh, this one is a half litre can, which is becoming more and more common in Japan with some of the breweries. Obviously, West Coast Brewing used these, um, Totopia used them, I've seen a few others as well. But yeah, a half litre can is fairly standard in Japan these days, although most of them are still using the sort of 370 cans that you very often see. But yeah, the artwork on this one is quite similar to what we've seen from Totopia in the past. And this little symbol at the bottom of the can there is one of the main ones from the brewery and you'll also find it on the side of the can too which looks really nice but there you can see uh, Rimphobia, a double dry hopped hazy double IPA 7.5% ABV as I said earlier I'd probably consider a double IPA to be 8% above but it tells you in this one there's Citra Cryo, Mosaic, Simcoe and there's also a hop in here called Alora which is a new one for me so let me just tell you a little bit about Alora because I took some notes on this so, um, Alora is an American hop, it's Hopsteiner that uh, created this one as part of their breeding programme, but um, apparently it gives aromas and flavours of peach, apricot, melon and a sort of yuzu-like citrus, and it's got 8 to 9% alpha acid, but it's the myrcene oil apparently that is uh, the big factor of this hop, so we need to see if uh, we come across it again, but if it's got yuzu-like um, flavours and things to it, I think that could be uh, really quite interesting. So um, yeah, I didn't realise that when I actually bought the beer, there was a hop in there that I didn't know. But uh, yeah, I thought the name of this, and honestly, I thought it was a double IP, and I also thought the name Rimphobia was quite funny because I have a bit of a dirty mind. That's just how it goes. But yeah, um, let's get this guy out into the glass then and see what it's all about. I'm really looking forward to this one. Rimphobia from Totopia in Nagakuti near Aichi. So let's do this. Here we are. Mm. That does look pretty nice. I think we've got maybe about 75% of the beer out and into the glass at the moment. But yeah, that looks like a really nice uh, New England hazy actually. So um, before the head disappears, you can see that this one's poured with just about a finger of quite a soapy but for me, I would say cream coloured head there. I think to you guys on the camera, it looks like perfect white, but to me with the naked eye, it looks a little touch creamy. Um, but yeah, definitely one of the soapier heads I've seen in recent times. You can see the sort of 
bigger bubbles at the top there and the sort of more foamy ones just down toward the bottom. But color wise, this looks very, very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I would describe this one as being akin to a mango juice. I always like comparing the appearance of New England IPAs to different fruit juices because that's really just what they remind me of. But yeah, remember the color of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelized and thus you get a darker color of beer. But any battle aging that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its color as well. Um, but you don't often have to care about that when it comes to uh, different kinds of IPAs, in all honesty. Uh, but yeah, I will say, for a 7.5 percenter, the level of haze on this one is pretty impressive. It is a little bit soupier and gloopier, but not the soupiest and gloopiest of New England's that I've come across at that ABV. But yeah, remember the level of haze in these beers depends on the oak content, wheat content, and to a degree what yeast you use. That can vary from brewery to brewery and beer to beer. But uh, yeah, not too much in the way of visible carbonation with this one. One or two bubbles sitting toward the side of the glass and a few little ones just going up toward um, the surface of the head there. And that head of course has faded away to just be a kind of thinner, more foamy layer now, but yeah. Looks good. You've just got that nice ring around the edge of the glass there too. So appearance wise, nothing particularly surprising about this beer when you consider what style it is. So yeah, I think we should leave it at that for appearance and go on and have a little look at the aroma. So let's do this. Very curious about this one. Ooh, that's nice. That is smelling very, very nice. Very fresh actually as well. So I would say I'd be very curious to see some of the Totopia brew sheets because I like to think that I would be able to smell a few Japanese IPAs and tell you what Totopia's one is. You know, if you gave me a West Coast brewing and you gave me a Totopia or something like this, I'd like to think I could tell them apart. Um, but yeah, Totopia's beers for me, they've always got a nice balance between the kind of barley malt and just a little bit of wheat. Actually, I think, um, as I've often said, for me, New England IPAs have six elements to think about when it comes to the um, six elements to think about when it comes to the kind of malty and yeasty side of the beer, if you like. So you've got your kind of farmhousey yeasty type character and your rye and grainy side of things. Those elements are a bit more common in New England brewed New England IPAs. But since the style has uh, moved away from there. And evolved the focus is a little bit more on kind of wheaty bitiness, oaty creaminess, barley malt bread, and also in some cases um, the sweeter side of things. The Totopia beers for me are quite distinctive in their leaning, you know, they lean toward the kind of barley malt, they've got a the little bit of wheat in there, so they have this kind of thick but very kind of fresh bready sort of smell in their uh, in their malt base, and that jumps out of this beer um, straight away at me. So um, yeah. Aroma wise, this is really, really nice. Um, the backbone of the beer, you've got a lovely sort of fresh white bready bread crust uh, in there, you know, like a kind of hedgehog roll or something like that. There's little elements of, um, yeah, there is a little element of, I would say, um, cracker as well, but quite minimal. So yeah, fresh white bready bread crust, little touch of cracker. There's also a wee bit of um, a little bit of cracker, a little bit of um, I would say brown bread in there, but not too much brown bread. It is more leaning toward the white bread, this one. And I will say this quite often with the Totopia beers as well, as they open up a bit more, you start to get some of the oaty character out of the beer. So for me, as I say, you get the bread crust, the little touch of wood, the little bit of Jacob's cream cracker. And then you also have, um, yeah, you've also got that little bit of, I would say, it's more like, yeah, you get the, the fluffy white bread has this little touch of sweetness to it. But then above that, you can smell the more dense and really smooth white bready character and that's the wheat so there's a little touch of wheat at the back of the nose there that gives you the wee bit of bitiness and um, but then yes you you know the rest of the nose it's actually very smooth and as I've often said wheat from different places behaves in uh, slightly different ways so you know European wheat is a little bit more kind of bitey the American wheat is a little bit smoother 
Um, I wonder if they're using a bit of Japanese wheat in this one. I know, I think maybe up in Hokkaido or in uh, Tohoku and things, they'll probably produce a little bit of wheat these days. But um, yeah, I'd be very curious to know where they're getting their malt from in this one, because the wheaty side of this beer, and as I say, the breadiness of Totopian beers is quite... Um, is quite unique i would say but yeah definitely the more you smell the beer uh, you get a little bit more of the the wheaty character coming out of it you've got lovely oaty characters coming out of uh, of this beer too and the oats are quite interesting because um as i've often said in new england ipas your oats are usually a very nice indicator of um a, a rough indicator i should say of how fresh your uh, ip is essentially the creamier the oats smell and taste the fresher the beer is the drier they are the older it is it's a very rough measure but i found based on experience that it works you can smell the oats are really nice and creamy in this one they're starting to give you just a little touch of dryness there so i'm guessing this beer might be you know five or six weeks old something like that because it's just got a little touch of it there but um, yeah, the way that it goes together, I think, is really nice in that regard. The oats actually start to give you a wee bit of sweetness the more that you smell of them too. Um, but yeah, when you sugar the beer up a little bit, you start to get that little bit of sweetness to it. So there's a wee bit of biscuit almost. There's a little bit of like Werther's Original Butter Candy, Butterscotch. And um, yeah, as I say, the way that that all goes together, I think, is, uh, is really nice too. The malty backbone of this one is really lovely actually and like i say totopia have a bit of a distinctiveness about them in that particular regard so yeah good stuff at the back of the nose then the yeasty side of things so for me the yeasty side of this beer is quite white bready leaning it's got little elements of cracker to it and little bits of like an almost kind of dare i say sourdough bready kind of character it's got a little bit of that kind of vibe going on but yeah jacob's cream cracker lovely white bread and then, yeah, a wee bit of like a white bread crusty note maybe from the, the yeasty side of things too. But yeah, um, all in all, the way that um, the way that this bit, the, the malty and yeasty side of this beer goes together, I think, is, uh, is really quite nice. So yeah, it's a big thumbs up from me. Um, the sweeter side of this one, I do think it gets a little bit sweeter the more that you smell of it too but i guess maybe this as far as i know this is one of their first attempts at the higher abv uh new england ipa so maybe they've just opted to make it a little bit sweeter in that sense too but um yeah let's go on to the hoppy side of things then so green component first so the green component for me in this one's quite leans mostly toward the kind of floral side of things it's not too bright actually kind of soft in a sense, but you've got some grassy zestiness in there, which I think is probably going to come from the citra out of all of these hops. Maybe the Alora, as I say, I don't know um, too much about that hop. This is the first time I'm encountering it, so exciting in that regard too. But yeah, you've got that little, there's a little tiny bit of earthiness, maybe a very slight woodiness, but yeah, mainly floral and nice and grassy as well. Remember with your IPAs that there are three types of hoppings you can do. You've got early edition hopping, which takes place usually within the first hour of the wort boil. That's going to give you most of your bitterness and a deeper, danker green component in terms of flavour and aroma. You've got uh, late edition hopping, which takes place usually within the last half hour of your wort boil. That's going to give you a wee bit of bitterness. Uh, yeah, a little bit of bitterness, mainly um flavor and aroma though and it's going to give you quite a bright green component and then dry hopping which takes place after the wort boil is complete is all about uh flavor and aroma and it's going to give you again very bright characteristics so new england ips tend to rely on late addition and dry hopping west coast ips use all three which is why they're a little bit deeper and danker take a deep breath after that we're starting to lose it there hmm. I think I'm just tired as well, in honesty. But yeah, um, let's look at the fruity side of the aroma then, now that we've covered the green component and the technicalities behind that. But yeah, the aroma to this one is quite nice. I certainly get that sharper peach in there, which is going to be citra and the alora in this case. You can get a wee bit of the, the melon, juicy mangoes in there as well. Quite a lot of soft passion fruit, apricot for sure. Very tropical leaning, this one, really. But there is a wee bit of orange to it as well. Um, and that's, it was mosaic, isn't it? I'm not imagining things. I'm pretty sure it smells like uh, mosaic. Yeah, no, I was right. 
don't know why I doubted myself there again tiredness setting in but yeah you do get that nice little bit of kind of oily uh, distinctive tangerine orange from the the mosaic in there but yeah um apricots papayas lovely juicy mango passion fruit and all of these sorts of things so yeah the way that that goes together i think is uh, is really really nice so it gets a big big thumbs up from me aroma wise this is pretty damn good so as i always say take a bit of time to enjoy your uh, yeah take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but i think it's about time that we have a taste of this one then and see what it's all about so yeah this is the rimphobia uh a 7.5 percent new england hazy imperial double if you want to call it ip as i say for me usually eight percent is where those beers are all come into play with the imperial thing double comes into play but still um this one is from totopia and uh, nagakuti Aichi prefecture near nagoya here in japan let's get stuck in slanjut skull cheers kampai yeah once again very very solid stuff from uh, totopia just from memory um it has the same kind of softness and kind of drinkability that you often get but it has a little bit more wheaty bite but again this is one of the stronger beers um maybe the strongest beer that i've had from them as of the time of filming which is october 2024 But yeah, that is really damn good actually. Um, but I would say that about um, Totopia. It's kind of interesting because if you compare these guys to some of the other IPA breweries, mainly West Coast Brewing and uh, Uchu, these guys have always stuck to doing like 6.5% IPA. So I wonder if that's something that's a bit different about, say, the Nagoya craft beer market if you like maybe they haven't been as exposed to the the bigger ipas as other places have but then again uchu and uh yeah uchu and west coast brewing are from kind of smaller places although you know wet you know uchu are way out in the countryside in hokuto and then um west coast brewing are from uh shizuoka i'd just be i'd be very curious to know why they've stuck until very recently doing six and a half percent a lot of the time so um, yeah, it's nice to see them, you know, be a little bit braver and make do something a little bit stronger. And it's turned out really nicely. Um, it just feels that little bit more amped up and you've got the wee bit more wheaty bitiness and bready character and things. But it's another really damn solid New England IPA from these guys. So if you get the chance to try it, you're not going to regret it. Pretty much any hazy IPA that you get from Totopia is going to be pretty good. So yeah, this has my uh, my thumbs up. So let's do as we always do then and we'll break the beer down and describe the flavour that little bit more in depth. Middle third of the palate. So the backbone of the beer, you've got that lovely fresh white bready bread crust in there and that forms your backbone. As you move further forward you get that little bit of um, woodiness towards the front of that middle third of your palate and as you go forward from that there's a little bit of, or as you go above that, I should say, you've got a little bit of the Jacob's Cream Crackers. So yeah, fresh, kind of baguette, white bready bread crust in there. Wee bit of like um, Jacob's Cream Cracker sitting uh, sitting on top of that, but then a wee touch of woodiness further forward on the palate. Then you have the kind of bready layer. So I would say there's a little bit of a kind of wholemeal brown bready character just sitting on top of the... Um, yeah, sitting on top of the like kind of cracker layer there. Then you get the white bready layer, which is a quite light and quite airy and, a, and quite a bit taller than the brown bready layer, I would say. And then, yeah, you have the, um, you've got the wheaty character above that. So, so the... 
the wheaty character that comes out of this one is really really nice um so yeah you've got that fluffier more airy white bread in there and it's got a little touch of um sweetness to it as well but then yeah above the um yeah above the um that white bread character it's the wheat and the wheat's interesting in this one i wonder if it's european wheat actually just based on the taste because yeah further back on that middle third of the palate you get the more bitey wheaty sort of thing coming out of it but then yeah you can feel it kind of smoothens out as you come further forward on the palate and yeah uh, above that you start to get the oats coming out of the beer so down the kind of center line of your palate you can feel this dense kind of creamy oaty sort of character there and as you move out toward the edges of uh, of your palate you do get that little bit more kind of um you get a little touch of dryness from the oaty side of the beer as well but yeah mainly quite creamy and just that little touch drier but in the dead center of your palate you can feel there's that little element of sweetness and there's that little circle there which has the kind of Werther's original butter candy butter scotchy sort of thing and then it's a wee bit more of a um it's a wee bit more of a kind of like Vitti's digestive biscuity type character that sits on top of that. So there's nothing surprising about this beer in that middle third of your palate and in terms of its malt base, generally speaking, but it's just really damn nicely done. And uh, that's what I've come to expect from uh, Totopia and I'm happy with it. So yeah, I think that covers the middle third of your palate then. So let's go to the back third of your palate then. Remember that generally speaking, sweeter flavours will come out further forward on the palate, more dry and bitter flavours will come out further back. And between middle and back third of your palate, you're going to get very similar uh, flavors, but they just you know you're going to get very similar flavors, but they just uh, come out at um, different intensities, I guess you could say. So yeah, the border region between middle and back third of your palate, you get that little bit of bready build up in there. You've got the brown bread in the base, the white bread in the middle, and then a more wheaty, bitey white bready character on the top. But yeah, the base of that. Um, back there you palate you've got the bread crust in there which feels a little bit more grainy of course the crackery layer above that there's the wholemeal brown bready layer which feels a little bit lighter taller and more airy then the white bready layer above that which again feels a little bit lighter taller and more airy and then yeah on top of that you've got the more dense and bitey wheaty um character uh coming out of this one but yeah then it's all about the uh the yeasty side of things um, and the yeasty part of the beer is quite nice as well. I wonder if Totopia are doing like house yeast strains and things because there is a little bit of distinctiveness about their beers in that regard too in my opinion. Yeah, so at the back of that, um, yeah at the back of that back th well, on the top of that back third of your palate yeah you get the yeasty side out of this beer so at its core it's got a little bit more of a kind of grainy brown bready character and it's maybe very slightly sweet as well and yeah i think there's a slightly sweeter and dense brown bread at its core then as you move further out from it it's got more of a kind of grainy brown bready note and then yeah you have a um you have a more um, kind of white bready, bread crusty character as well. So um, yeah, the way that that goes together is quite nice in this one. And it does give you a wee bit of a kind of graininess and crackeriness into the aftertaste too. So yeah, definitely back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. Then as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue, it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So yeah, the way that that goes together, I think is... Uh, it's really quite nice so um yeah let's move on to the hoppy side of things then so green component first back corners of the palette you've got that nice little touch of earthiness in there which is going to come from your mosaic as you move further forward the earthiness mellows out a little bit but it stays there there's maybe a wee touch of woodiness underneath and then yeah as you push further forward toward the kind of front corners of your palette it's got a little bit more kind of floral aromaticity to it there and there's a wee touch of bitterness to this one too which is interesting was one of the hops cryo in this too yeah the citra 
was cryo, so you will feel that little bit. What the reason I was thinking of that is because some of the there's a part of the hoppy component just feels that little bit more oily, and cryo oils and stuff like that will do that to the beer. But yeah, um, as I say, it gets a little bit more floral and spicy as you reach the front corners of the palate. There's maybe a tiny touch of pine resin underneath that, of course, too. But then, yeah, around the front curve of your palate, the beer's a little bit lighter and more grassy. And it's got a wee touch of zestiness to it as well. So I think that's going to come from the citra, probably. And I guess the Alora might uh, do a wee bit of stuff there as well. But yeah, I think that covers the green component. So let's look at the front third of your palate then and the fruity side of things to uh, round off the flavour section of this video. So yeah, um, border region between front third and middle third of your palate. Again, you get that nice little bit of bready build up there. So it's brown bread in the base, white bread in the middle, then the more wheaty character on top. And yeah, the base of that front third of your palate, you've got the lovely kind of baguette, white bready bread crust. You've got uh, a bit of cracker layer there, then yeah, brown bread, white bread, and then the smoother side of the, um, the wheat which is really nice and then above that you've got that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer so yeah i like how that goes together in this one for sure so yeah that is really nice um on the yeah on the hoppy side of things, then on the fruity side of the beer, that nice oily bubble. At the back of that front third of your palate, there's a little tiny touch of grapefruit there. That's gonna be the citra that gives you that. And you can feel with that, that sits in the base. And then as you come further forward, you get that really distinct melon coming out of it, which is gonna be the Alora. And I always find my palate really just melon I notice it kind of right away. So yeah, I would definitely agree with the melon on this one. But you'll notice as well that at the top, like higher up, you get that peachy, and which citra can give you that, but I'm guessing that's another thing that you can attribute to Alora as well. But yeah, as you move further forward, you get that really big, juicy, sort of mango-y character. So yeah, it's kind of like you've got the grapefruit at the back, then just forward from that, you've got the juicy mango, and the peach sitting above it then as you move further forward you get the softer passion fruit and as you reach the middle of that front third of your palate you can feel the sort of apricots kind of sitting underneath that so yeah the way that that goes together is really really nice as you move forward into the front half of the front third of your palate i think it definitely becomes more about the mosaic that big tangerine orangey character and then maybe just behind the very front tip of the tongue there is a slightly stronger citrus in there which i'm guessing is something you could attribute to the alora as well but citrus in here and it can give you a bit of a sort of lemon limey character too so yeah there is a wee bit of a more distinctive citrusy note coming out of this beer too so that's worth bearing in mind um but yeah i like that with this one the fruity side of this beer as well is, is really nicely done and i think uh, it suits having that slightly stronger citrusy note and the wee touch of grapefruit in there it kind of builds a bridge if you like because this beer does get a bit more wheaty and bitey i would say into the aftertaste so yeah i think the way they've done this one is really quite nice uh, and as i say i would you know if people ask me about the Totopia IPAs, I probably would lean toward that and say they're quite bready, but at the same time a bit more wheaty leaning, if you like. But yeah, all in all, another very, very solid New England hazy, hazy from these guys. That's what I expect and that's what I've got, so I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, let's round off the review then with a wee quick look at the mouthfeel. So for me, mouthfeel of this one is pretty much what you'd expect. It's mid-bodied, maybe pushing toward the kind of top end of mid-bodied. As you very often get with Japanese craft beers, it feels very, very clean. You can taste the quality of the water in this one, something I'm very sensitive to as a Scot and a Swede as well, I guess, these days. Um, so yeah, the, the water quality in this one is really nice, very clean. Japanese expect beers to have that element of drinkability to them, and this one has that. Pretty much all Japanese craft beer will give you that. Carbonation does have a little bit of a prickle to it, as you'd expect. In terms of your IBU in this beer, I think this one's got to be about 40. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 50, but I think it is a little bit more than your standard 30. There is that wee bit of bitiness and stuff uh, to this one from the wheat, and also the little bit of bitterness from the, um, from the hops as well. Um, So 
So yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is um, is really really nice. Uh, in terms of the multi character in this one, it's got a wee bit of dryness underneath, a bit of smoothness in the middle, a slight touch of sweetness, and then yeah, you get that wee bit of creaminess and drier sweetness on top. Your fruity side of the beer, like we said, it's quite citrusy leaning, I would say, um, especially into the aftertaste, but it's softer and more kind of tropical leaning in the beginning of the flavour. But all in all, a really nicely done beer, this one, and cool to see uh, Totopia being a bit more adventurous and making their beer that little touch stronger as well. So, yeah, I think we can uh, leave it at that for this one. I've been quite, it's nice to try a, a properly fresh Totopia once again and something just that little bit different. So, yeah, I think we can leave it there. This one was the Rimphobia, a 7.5% New England Hazy. Uh, Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IP. As I say, I think 8% is when you can start to call something a double IP. That's just me. But still, um, stronger beer for uh, Totopia, and I'm very happy with it. So, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Totopia as well. And we will definitely return to these guys again at some point in the near future. But in the meantime, check out my social media, check out their social media. I'll see you guys again in the next review. Slanger, Skull, cheers, and campai.